Welcome back to another video with Notion Workflow. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing how to create a simple summary output using a Notion formula and the Let's Formula function. As you can see, I have generated some sample data for supplies, and then I created a very simple summary database in which we'll just add a formula property and a relation property to create some basic summary outputs. To show you what we're trying to recreate, we're going to be basically doing what this calculate function does within the statistics side, where we see sum, average, median, min, max, and range. And again, in then any database view, you can try to calculate these numerical simple calculations at the very bottom of these Notion database views. You can also do this in grouped views, which can be helpful to use if you don't use them already. If I do this, group, I do region, we can hover over to the number, go to statistics, choose whatever we need, average of total perhaps, and we can see the average in total by region. We can do all the things we could do within the bottom of the database view itself, but now we can group it by various simple statistics based on different properties. Because we have three different numerical properties, we can manipulate any three of them within this sort of setting when we do group views. Again, we're only seeing 10 entries within this view because we've set the load limit to 10 pages, and that's so that we can make it easy for ourselves to make these simple calculations at the bottom. Today, we'll create a formula property using the let's formula function to replicate all these basic default statistics that you can specify. I'm gonna create a summary formula property, and then I'm gonna relate it to the sample data. The only caveat is that you'll have to at least create a fresh database with two properties, and relationally connect all entries to, to an entry within the database you just created that you can title summary. So once we create this database entry, we need to make sure that we relate all possible entries within the data that we're trying to analyze and generate a summary statistic for. In my case, if we hover to the table view and hover to the top left corner, you can see this box appear, and that selects all the database views in the current database view that you see when a load limit is set. So because we have the load limit set to 10, we're only selecting 11. If we calculate the total number of database entries, we want to highlight all 43. So the way we can do that is do load more, or we can just set this load limit to 50, and then click on that left corner again, and now we've selected all 43. This is a really easy way to quickly relate your entries in bulk. Assuming you only have a couple hundred entries, you might be trying to summarize. Otherwise, you'd need to rely on third-party software or the Notion API to relate thousands and thousands of entries to summarize. So this is not perfect, and it's not entirely useless either, and so I kind of want to show you a quick way to summarize all of those statistics using one formula property in which you can manually relate all entries of a database that we might want to summarize. We're going to start with the Let's formula. Shift enter twice and then close it out. We're going to want to create that summary statistic. So it's going to be mean. And then because in a let's formula, we're defining variables, we want to add another comma as a placeholder. And then this is where we will define the variable that we're trying to create. So once we've defined it, we're going to do shift enter tab add a space and then add the next variable median. And then we'll just add that comma to quickly define it. Shift enter tab space count placeholder. And then I'm going to just define the last variable mean at the very end. I'm going to add a quotation placeholder for all of the variables so that we can verify that this works. And there we go. So this is a really easy and quick way to set up your formula structure so that all you really have to do now is define these variables and then output them with some text. For example, we can call it plus and then add that theoretical number that we're going to eventually define within this formula. Again, that's the basic structure of that formula summary that we're going to create. And this was meant to be a sort of example, and then using that as sort of a base to duplicate and quickly output something that makes sense. Again, we've created this mean example, and in our case, we're going to want to define it first and create a baseline output that we can sort of duplicate to make this process a little easier and faster. So once we output that, we want to add a new line. And so the a way to add a new line in the Notion formula is by going to the backward slash, which is above your enter key, typically. And then we're going to do that and N. Open that up and then close it with some quotes. And then we're going to basically duplicate that whole process. Shift enter, shift enter. And then for each of these labels, we're just going to change it to those variables that 
we created above. And so now we have a nice little output that we can create once we've set that up. I forgot to add the plus to link everything up. As you can see, a basic structure for how to create that summary output once we're manipulating the relational entries that we have here. We're going to have bulk select, edit property, summary, add it there, and then now we'll get to outputting each of these variables with a series of map formulas. We're going to do map, open it up, we're relating the sample data, and we want to take the total, for example, of the sample information, and then let's close it. And basically we've, as you can see, we've mapped an array of numbers. So all the numbers for total across all 43 entries that are related to this sample data. Now we want to take the average, so we're just going to do dot mean, that brand new formula function that I shared with you all in the previous video. And there we have it. We have a mean of $456.46. Now we have a very long number. And so we're going to do round, open it up, times 10, divided by 10. And now we've shortened it to that decimal place. But because we want to maybe include cents, we'll add another zero. So now we have that output that includes cents. We have a mean that says that, and maybe we want to add a dollar symbol so we can go to our mean output and add that dollar. So now we have that clean looking output. When we click on done, we see that mean of $456.46. Now we can just go down this list and start copying some of these formulas to make it easier to quickly get everything done. So we can copy this whole string that we've created and paste it across count, median, min, max, and then we'll hold off on the range. All we really have to do is we go to dot mean. For median, we just do dot median. For count, we do dot length. And for min, we do dot min. For max, you can imagine it's max. As you can imagine, that was very simple. And once we created one formula function for mean, we just replicated that process for these other attributes. And so this is just a really fast way to understand maybe how you can use these formula functions if you might need it for your organization or team. Now, the range obviously is the difference between the min and the max, and so we can just copy the max. We can add the subtract symbol, copy the min, paste it there. Now we calculated the range. So that is how that summary output would look. Again, we added that dollar symbol for mean, so we can add that across all the other outputs. And now we have a cleaner looking summary for dollar amounts. This is a very simple formula series, but I do think you can easily build on this and manipulate further if you routinely run through several of these calculations related to maybe numerical entries within a Notion database. I've been kind of sick this last week, and so uh, apologies for my voice and my nasally tone. In my next video, I think we're going to be using a similar format to the summary output where we can check for duplicates across Notion database entries. Now, I don't think there's a YouTube video out that shares how you might be able to do that, and I'll be giving all the credit to someone who's already figured this out, and I'll just be reusing what they've created to sort of demonstrate how powerful this formula function is. Alrighty, thanks for watching if you made it this far, and I'll see you in the next one.